And so I realized that if I'm in this amount of pain now and they're not listening to me, when I get to the point where I'm laboring and mm -hmm. giving birth, they're not going to listen to me, yeah. <laughs> you know? So I don't want to be in a very vulnerable position and not have someone listen. Mm -hmm. Welcome to another episode of the Preparing for Pregnancy After Loss podcast. And today I have the pleasure of sitting with Tia Deshazor. You'll get to know a bit more about Tia in just a few minutes, but I'll start with her bio. Tia works in the performing arts as an actor, writer of musicals, and career coach for artists. She's also the co-founder of Bold an organization for Black women in the performing arts. She's originally from Detroit and currently lives in Harlem with her husband, C.K. Edwards and baby Lexington. Welcome, Tia. Hi, I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> yes, I'm so honored to have you. So today's episode is going to be about you sharing your birth story. Yay! And the part of that is advocacy and standing up for yourself and seeking other options. So yes. really, really excited to have you share. Yes, I'm excited to share. <laughs> so let's start with how we connected. I remember that you were seeking doula services and I was one of the doulas that you interviewed. So yeah. tell us first why you were seeking doula services. Like what, why was having a doula important to you? Well, I think I always wanted someone to be there and like support me in the process of like giving birth. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until I got pregnant and didn't really have a lot of information and um, that I was advised to get a doula because I kept asking questions. And <laughs> the person that advised me is the founder of uh, an organization called Radical Health, Rad Health. Mm. And she was like, get a doula. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has a great, um, uh, you can tech actually text Rad Health, uh, any questions about like health, women's health, and they'll respond to you. So I had been texting with the app or, the program and oh, about amazing. just like, you know, how am I supposed to decide <laughs> where to have, a, have my baby? Like what hospital? Like, do I have to have, like, if I get an epidural, just like all these questions about the birth birthing process. Mm -hmm. And um, I had spoken to the founder, Ivelisse and Dino as well. And she was like, let's get you a doula. And she <laughs> actually recommended, um, uh, what is the program that you're a part of that Bronx rebirth Bronx rebirth yeah. to, um, to, 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 uh, find a doula with. So it was just really, I was like, okay, yes, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll go this route. And, um, just such a great experience. Like every, each doula that I spoke with, I spoke with three <laughs> after I got off the phone with, with each of them. I was like, that's the one, <laughs> <laughs> obviously you can't choose all three of them. They were all amazing. Um, so yes that's how we met yeah yeah <laughs> and I remember you following up and saying oh my gosh you're also awesome I don't know who to choose and I said follow your heart and you did yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the right person for you yeah and I and I and I ended up going with Jasmine because I just I knew that I did not want my mother to be in the room um but I knew that I wanted someone motherly in the room mm -hmm. and because, and I, and I only mean that someone who's a little older yeah. and, um, and there's also like, a, I think of like a commandingness that jazz has that like, she does have that presence. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I, I'll probably share more about how that, in, you know, influenced me, um, with my decision later, but mm -hmm. it was kind of like what I needed without having my mom there because I yeah. do love my mom and I, she's not nurturing and she, she knows this. We talked about it. You know, she knows like she just makes me more intense and more anxious when I tell her that I'm, you know, I'm struggling with something or something's intense. She's like, yeah. yes, I agree. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> instead of being like, let's, you know, so um, I, I decided that that was the route to go mm -hmm. because I, I needed, you know, a little bit, um, yeah, little Jasmine like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you and I worked on coaching and emotional healing. Yeah. So because I was like, well, I still want to work with you somehow. <laughs> like you're such a wonderful presence. I was like, I have to have her in my life somehow. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, you when we had our consultation, you you spoke about somatic healing. And that really spoke to me and where I was during that season of, you know, being pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And I I'm so honored to have been on your birthing team because I talk a lot about the birthing team. Like, what are your needs? Like, how can yeah. you get the people that you need to make this experience what, what you want it to be? Yeah, yeah. I definitely um, didn't realize. So I'm so glad that you mentioned it and, mm -hmm. you know, offered it because I didn't realize that there was another missing piece that I could have benefited from in the emotional healing that needed to happen and i think with being pregnant for the first time apart from family and the family trauma things that i had gone through mm -hmm. and covid <laughs> and you know um starting a business of my own during covid and being pregnant and my industry being essentially shut down mm -hmm. um it, it, there was a lot to deal with and yeah. that I was holding on to. Uh, and so I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So I am remembering that a part of your journey was actually being in the conventional hospital system and having to de have a detour from that. So tell us about that experience. Yeah. Where to begin with that one? Um, <laughs> I think that I, I, in my head, in the back of my head, like years ago, I think the first year that I got married and we've been married for 11 years, I had watched the business of being born. And so that was in the back of my head. But when I got pregnant <laughs> 10 years later, I was like, I don't know if that's my, my path. You know, I think mm -hmm. I'm just gonna, you know, we're in a pandemic. I don't, I don't, whatever reasoning was, I just was like, I think I'm going to take the easiest route, which it mm -hmm. seemed to be the easiest at the time. Yeah. Um, just mean in the hospital. Yeah. Conventional. Yeah. <laughs> let's not try anything that, <laughs> that is, you know, counterculture, you know, you're always, you you always do the most in that area anyway. So let's just keep it what I thought was simple, which, you know, um, and so I started off, you know, with my gynecology appointments and they recommended, they tried to recommend, you know, different uh, places, different obstetricians, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't take my insurance a, mm -hmm. a lot of times. And so finally, um, I was recommended to go to Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I started off like very optimistic there. Mm -hmm. and, and I qualified for because of my insurance. And at the time I was on Medicaid to go to their clinic, which I didn't, I guess I did not understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was like going to be a situation um, where it's different than the people who went to the different part of Mount Sinai mm -hmm. and recommended it highly, um, a different situation. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and so this meant that it was in the basement of the hospital, um, very, dark and uh it's also a teaching hospital just things that i didn't really know that i was getting into when i, mm -hmm. I was like mount sinai that person had a great experience that person had a great experience this is a different experience if you have if you have medicaid oh which my is, gosh <laughs> yeah so here i am at this clinic and it's very like i don't know the other it's this is a like a audition term but like very much like a cattle call Mm. where like you're just a number and um you don't know and this is i think true in many situations but you don't know who you're going to be seeing at your appointments mm. um you know from from one to another you could be seeing a different uh physician and the first day that i went uh it was a a student a first year resident and it was just he was very nice at you know to to meet and talk to 
um, he was a very nice person until he had to do an exam at that time. Oh I had gosh. to have, a, yeah, <laughs> they talk. I, I realized now that I did not have to, but at the time I had to have, I thought that I had to have a pap smear. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up having this very painful pap smear with this person um, who just like the, all the warmth that he was giving me when we first started talking, just like went away when he was like, you know, inside of my body with, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, whoa, this is not like, I could tell he was nervous. He had a, a person with like watching him. And I, it was just a very uncomfortable experience for that to be my mm -hmm. first experience there. There's also like so much blood that you take, your urine sample, they make you like take it to a place. Like there's just, there's this way that they handle you where mm -hmm. it's like, you're in, like, you have to do this. You show up and you go here, you take your urine sam sample, put it here. Mm -hmm. you do this. So it was very like, and then there's all these signs, put your urine sample. I'm like, why can't I just have like someone else take care of my urine sample for me? Like yeah. it's, it's, and I, and I imagine that that's not what's that, well, that's not what was happening upstairs. Right. You know, someone's, <laughs> so but you, um, the way that they explain everything is very like, this is the, how we are with the women down here in our oh teaching my gosh. Class. So. So that was my first experience and I'm a very optimistic person. So I was like, okay, you know what? And this is naive. I, I figured, I figured this out, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be as friendly as possible. I will make friends with them and I will get the attention that I need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I'm very charming and I can, <laughs> you know, like that was not that's not that did not happen it wasn't the case at all my second experience was with i requested a midwife um i thought that person would be warmer mm -hmm. that was not the case mm -hmm. she often like laughed off my concerns um and then my and my second my third uh appointment was virtual mm -hmm. and I had started to experience some pain, like with round ligament pain, which was, that was probably the biggest issue during my pregnancy was when mm -hmm. I started experiencing that, experiencing that. And because I'm something that use someone who uses my body in, um, my work, I don't, I don't let anything just like sit, you know, like if yeah. there's pain, I want to address it. And I know that pregnancy, there's going to be aches and pains, but this felt like something that like was not normal because mm -hmm. my friends who were pregnant could walk and i was having a lot of trouble walking mm -hmm. and so i um asked for physical therapy and i got a lot of pu pushback mm -hmm. um the the third midwife that i saw she said well i don't know you so i don't want to um during our virtual uh, our virtual appointment she said i i don't i had never seen you so i don't want to refer you to physical therapy without seeing you and this was the middle of COVID. it's the middle of winter mm -hmm. and i and i'm just like just give me a referral for physical therapy i'm telling you that I, i'm not kidding. asking for drugs like yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like i'm in pain. i just yeah. want to address it and make sure it's not abnormal um and there i just i was really turned off by that pushback Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple other instances that happened that I was like, this is not right. You're not listening mm -hmm. to me. And so I realized that if I'm in this amount of pain now and they're not listening to me, when I get to the point where I'm laboring and mm -hmm. giving birth, they're not going to listen to me, yeah. <laughs> you know? So I don't want to be in a very vulnerable position and not have someone listen mm -hmm. um and then also i don't know who's going to be there i've already met yeah. three different physicians and i can't trust that so mm -hmm. that was sort of my breaking point of like okay well <laughs> i'm going to uh seek other options and mm -hmm. thankfully my my husband had been saying we can do it here we can do it at home and i just mm -hmm. i kept being like what are you talking about I don't think we have the space. I don't think we have any, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that route, but he kept saying that. And we looked at, um, we looked at birthing centers as well. And then it did make sense at, in the end to, um, 
look into having a midwife come and um, birth at home. So, yeah. and of course you so wonderfully <laughs> referred me to Nubia, the, yeah. the midwife that we ended up using. Yeah. Hmm. Nubia's amazing. Just amazing. <laughs> So yes, that was your your path to deciding to get a midwife. And I do remember CK, like we had one initial meeting where CK was present and he was like, yeah, we can do it here. Like we can set it up there. Like it can hold there. I was like, looking at it like <laughs> yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So what was your experience like working with Nubia from the first time you either spoke to her or met her? What was that like for you? Um, completely different. Mm. I felt like there was an, an equal amount of warmth and competence. Mm. And immediately, like I was just getting information from her, but mm. also like a very different vibe than what I was getting in the hospital. Um, I was getting more information, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, questions that I didn't even think to ask were being answered because mm -hmm. she's so, she's such a wealth of information. You can ask her one question and she's like, she'll tell you all about it. And she'll also send you a PDF, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's, it's also like information that's, you can understand. Mm -hmm. And then also there's a warmth. There's a like, um, yeah, that's the best way I can explain it. That she's, she is approachable and warm and, mm -hmm friendly but also competent and very knowledgeable mm -hmm. so um it was a difficult decision because she didn't our incision our insurance did not cover her mm -hmm. um and we met with another midwife that we would have coverage for and we decided not to go with her because i just felt that there was something about nubia and i was like we're gonna make this work mm -hmm. you know in this pandemic whatever we have to do we're gonna go with nubia mm -hmm. so working with her was immediately different um we had to go out to yonkers where her uh um her birthing place is i don't remember <laughs> what exactly <laughs> she refers to it as but um it was a, it was a great time we would go and he was able to come with me that was another thing in the hospital like they wouldn't let me facetime him for the oh, wow. ultrasounds and i would be like i would be crying because just like i'm alone yeah. and all of a sudden i'm able to be welcomed into her like very beautiful colorful space mm. and my husband is with me and I'm able to ask the questions that I need. And it's mm -hmm. just a completely different environment. And I, in a place, in a position where you're so vulnerable in pregnancy, your first pregnancy, it's just what, you, what I needed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. That almost brought me to tears. Just thinking of the contrast, like in the basement, you didn't <laughs> say cold, but it just feels like it's cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and you know another thing because it's it was COVID, you know, the idea of sitting in a waiting room, you know, with other pregnant women, I you know at first was kind of excited about, but at, we're six feet apart. We're like the chairs are all facing this different directions because of COVID, and like they're everyone's masked and looking straight ahead. No one's talking. Like I just imagine that we'd be like, "You're pregnant." let's you know let's chat about it that wasn't the environment mm -hmm. and so working with nubia we did have one birthing class where she brought in another um family that was due around the same time as us and it was a mm -hmm. completely different experience i mean we were still safe we were still taking the precautions that come with a pandemic yeah but you know we it was a, a more welcoming environment a more communal environment yeah yeah and I remember us having a conversation about preparation for childbirth and what you shared was that you were always learning so much along the way, like each interaction, each appointment, you were learning so much about your body and the pregnancy that, mm -hmm. you know, by the time you had the childbirth ed class, it was sort of like the bonus or the supplemental, the additional info, because each interaction, there was like a wealth of information being shared with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, when we had our, our 
class, it just went deeper about like breastfeeding and that I hadn't even thought about that yet. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then, you know, what to do when the baby gets there. And mm -hmm. it was, it was very, it was very in depth, but also very like, you know, digestible. Yeah. Beautiful. So tell me about your experience working with Jasmine, your doula. Um, so great. Um, and you know, it's so funny because I would forget to even like reach out to her. <laughs> She'd be <laughs> reaching out to me when I'm making these decisions. Like I did, I would forget that I have support. And I think that's just a me thing where I forget in life a lot that I have support and that I can ask for help, mm -hmm. even help that is like signed on to help me. So like she would check in with me and be like, hello, <laughs> like, <laughs> how are things going? What have you done? And so then she would help me make a decision. So I did leave out that she definitely had such a big part in making me feel like I was safe enough to have to give birth at home. Mm. She I, she knew that I was f frightened or had some, you know, some things holding me back. Yeah. But she was always like very matter of fact in the way she was like, so it sounds like you want a home birth. <laughs> 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 it does. <laughs> um, but not pushy, but like also like I'm repeating back to you what you're saying. Yeah. And, but she was always like very, affirming that like whatever kind of birth you choose you're going to have a beautiful birth yeah um and so anything that anytime we met with her she was great we met it we met a lot virtually and then toward the end she came and i remember that she did an exercise with us the one with that you're holding the ice in your hands which mm -hmm. i don't know if you do that with your I haven't done that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really like, that was really uh, helpful to think about how you are going to work through those intense moments and, and, and feelings. And, um, and, uh, and it also was like reassuring to me because I was like, oh, I actually, that was intense, but like, I handled it well, like mm -hmm. I, you know, tapping into what I have as a meditative practice already, mm -hmm. um, practicing those things with her was really, really, really helpful. Yeah, she was just great. I mean, she was always just there as a reassuring presence. Mm -hmm. Always reassuring me that like, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. Even when I did go into labor, um, she was so just so calm, you know, it, it was people that do this all the time, <laughs> have a level of calm that you're like, <laughs> hello, like you're so calm, which is great. And and because I'm like, oh, this is supposed to be happening. I'm supposed to be throwing up. Great. She's just like, oh, this is good. And you know, here's the trash can, you know. And then like, let's go out and walk. And there was a moment when I was walking and I was I we were in the park and I just like needed to throw up. And she was like, this is normal. And I was I I always get a little uncomfortable when I throw up and like, it's mm -hmm. a scary thing for me. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know if I feel safe. And she was like, you are safe. Mm -hmm. just, just, you are safe. And I was like, you're right, I'm safe. And so <laughs> laboring in the park and her like getting us to like walk up and down the stairs. And um, I wouldn't have done that. I would have just stayed there laying and having intense, <laughs> intense contractions mm -hmm. if, if it weren't for her. But it actually really helped to move around and get out side and yeah yeah i'm also envisioning that in your neighborhood like you got to birth in your neighborhood in the park passing the buildings like ugh. <laughs> still walk there <laughs> we still walk through there and there was this so it we live right next to morningside park mm -hmm. and there was this man there with his boom box and he was just having the best time and we like went to the steps and he was there and he could see that i was in labor <laughs> i was laboring and um he was like i'm gonna play a special song for I was you just about to ask that. <laughs> and he, i don't remember what it is someone has it on video but um he played a special song for uh, us as i was having a contraction oh and it was just God. really nice <laughs> so, harlem i know <laughs> It's like sometimes I'm really frustrated with the boom boxes in Harlem, but like that was a beautiful time. I was like, you know what? That was that was 
beautiful. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, it was great. And to like, to, yeah, give birth and like labor in your neighborhood. It just, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Thanks for reminding me of that because, you know, I, we still walk through that park and with now with Lex on the other side and, <laughs> um, and it's really, it's really cool. Yeah. Something else that I'm remembering is um, I think we might have talked about um, the vision for your birth, like what it looks like. Yeah. And I think you mentioned lights and affirmations all around the room from strong women. And yeah. of course, being supported by CK and your doula. And I ended up seeing the photo when you posted your birth. And I was like, wow, that was it. Like that, that was it. That's what you described. Yeah, it, it really was. It really was. I had these, this deck that I had ordered of affirmations during birth and pregnancy. And so I picked out the ones that I wanted to have, you know, because I went into labor a little a week early, so I didn't have it ready yet. Mm -hmm. but that's where my friends came in and when i told them that my water broke they came over right away and i was like these are the cards that i picked mm -hmm. and i want these lights the lights had just come in the mail <laughs> <laughs> so they had of course it's it's a day-long process or can be and so they had put the lights up where i wanted the birthing pool to be um and they put all my affirmations on the wall and it was just it was really perfect it was it was a beautiful the space was beautiful um and then they just held space for me like they just sat on the sofa out outside of the room where i was you know having contractions and they waited until they were needed and they would bring me things and food and throughout the whole day and i never felt so supported in my life you know <laughs> i was like wow. wow this and i was like crying i remember just crying from um just feeling supported they just showed up they had all the things and um and i just i felt so supported during a really vulnerable time that could have been really scary but i really yeah. just felt supported yeah i was almost like holding back tears like feeling it creeping up <laughs> because oh. it's like your your birth was a ceremony what it did listen it did feel that way wow wow yeah it did it really did it really did wow it yeah thinking about it like that mm -hmm. having them come over and be there holding you know space for me and just mm -hmm. being present and then they also i had um some of my other friends who were not you know all over the world who were not able to be there you can't have everybody there <laughs> <laughs> i had like a texting chain right and some of them had to come to uh, an in-person um small baby shower mm -hmm. and they had gotten candles and so i said when i go into labor just light this candle and say a prayer yeah. for me yeah. and so they one of my friends had them on the was texting they're like here's what's happening right now continue to pray like here we are like and so i knew that they, that was happening they were praying for me and then every now and then like someone would read a text from from that group that was just mm -hmm. like, super encouraging and i just mm -hmm. felt like you know surrounded by like a host of <laughs> prayers and friends and angels and um and you also sent me um on our trello board that mm -hmm. we used you also sent me like imagery of like loving maternal figures like my mm -hmm. angelo and um cicely tyson um mm -hmm. that really you know kind of just during the really intense parts ha being able to imagine those women rooting for me at, mm -hmm. who've you know, come before me and given birth before me um, was really, really helpful. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks for letting me know that. I love putting those yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> so how, um, I'm curious as to what it was like working with um, both Nubia and Jazz or having them work with you in the midst of the birth. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Uh, when Dula, I'm sorry, when Dula Jasmine got there, when Jasmine got there, mm -hmm. she, um, she was the one, you know, making sure that I was like eating. Um, uh, she used the Rebozo thing, mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. Um, and that was really, really helpful, especially early on. Um, 
and Nubia was able to just like focus on the birthing process, mm -hmm. getting, getting it out. I mean, everyone at the end was like holding me up in some way, like <laughs> rooting for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and Nubia had her, uh, co-midwife Sage come as well. And, mm -hmm. and they were, they worked together really well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think a lot of people get confused with like what a doula is and what a midwife is. And, and so but they do very, very different things. Mm -hmm. And um, Nubia was the one who was like telling me how to breathe. She would like she would like be taking me on these meditational journeys, like as I like in between contractions, wow. she would be like, and then she would like, just know when a wave was coming and, and I would be like, and, and it would just be that it, she was, so she also was like supporting me in a different way, but like in a more physical way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and giving me like knowing when I needed like a, you know, a breather or when to change positions. You know, I used a stool, I got in the water, mm -hmm. um, I was in the bed at the end. Um, so just being being able to just try different ways, mm -hmm. uh, that was her like being like, okay, let's do this. Let's lower the stool. Let's get out of the water. Let's, you know, go on all fours. Let's try that, you know? And so, and because of Jasmine, I had, remembered to be that was one of the things she, that she coached me through before the before I went into labor she, she said she coached me to just be open to mm -hmm. suggestions yeah um I think she expressed it like that's probably the one of the hardest things is when like the birthing mother just like isn't open to trying new positions or you know breathing things or whatever it is. And so I had that in my mind, like, okay, I'm going to just try everything that they ask me to do. Mm. I'm also an actor. So like, I'm just trained to try a direction. <laughs> <laughs> to do I'm like, sure, I will do that, you know? <laughs> um, uh, and so I, I, I definitely like just tried everything that they had me to do. And so Nubia was the one who was like, okay, let's get on this. Let's do this. Let's try this CK. Mm -hmm. And so at the end, CK, she was like, CK, get behind her. And so and and help her push so that was like what was happening at the end he was behind me helping me push mm. in the bed and um and so yeah yeah oh my gosh and, uh, oh, beautiful yeah it's really really when i when i think about it again it it was a really beautiful experience mm -hmm. yeah I'm curious, did you prep your friends before they arrived? Like, did they have a sense of what they would be doing? Because it sounds like they showed up ready. Like, let's go. <laughs> they did show up ready, but like afterwards they were like, I thought I would just be like taking pictures. Um, <laughs> like holding your leg. Or, you know, or there was a moment where the they needed to fill up the tub and, it, and they were like, like really the water was stopped coming out hot. So they were like boiling hot water. And they like, they, they were really great sports. Cause they felt like it was like a, a I love Lucy episode. They were just like running in <laughs> pots of water and like, you know, and like making sure that it, and that the water was warm enough and everything. And, mm -hmm. and they were like, we didn't know we'd be doing all that, but they were, they, they were ready. They did come in so ready, however they needed to be used, but they were like, what do you mean? There's a, there's a doula, there's a, there's an assistant, there's a, there's a midwife. But, you know, I think the team was also like, Hey, we're all here. Let's all work together and do this and support, mm -hmm. support, you know, this baby coming here. And, yeah. and so it's so special to have them here to, to have had them there. I would have never thought that I wanted them to be there. Um, one of them was like recording and the other one was like on the other side of me, just like fanning me and <laughs> um, when he came into the world. So, and then they like, it was great because then I had things that I had to do, you know, like go to the bathroom and like all the things that happen after you give birth. And, mm -hmm. um, we had skin to skin and all of that stuff, but Nubia, she was like, well, since they're here, why don't you take a nap <laughs> and then they will hold him. And then you can, you know, you can wake up and after you've had a little bit of rest. So that was great. Yeah. And it's just such a beautiful thing that like those two women got to be with him 
because CK was out after, <laughs> after he was so he was so into it until like the baby was here and then a few like an hour or two later he was just like he was out which yeah more power to him yeah um, but like they were there they were holding the baby for you know a couple hours while we got to sleep and mm. so it's a beautiful thing to to have had them there like yeah. holding him and making sure he's okay and yeah yeah birthing in your community with your people literally right yeah. <laughs> so yeah. amazing what was it like giving birth in a tub? And I just want to say this for people who are listening and don't know you, you're, you can rent a tub. Yes. <laughs> so you don't own a tub I that I you birth. I own one. <laughs> um, well, I didn't actually give birth in it. I just mm. labored for a while in it. Um, it was really relaxing. And I think I couldn't feel the contractions that much anymore, which is why I kind of like had to get out <laughs> because we had to move it along. But um but yeah, it was, I got it. I needed that moment though, to kind of like relax. Mm -hmm. And so getting into it and I was just like, I was like, oh, okay. I, and, but I just wasn't feeling the contractions as much, which mm -hmm. was good. But then I also like, you kind of need to feel the contractions to push. And yeah. um, one thing for me is that I, I don't, you know, they describe pushing as like, making it having a bowel movement and so i don't really push when i have a bowel movement which is something that i guess is unique to me <laughs> so <laughs> i had trouble pushing and so i needed to actually feel the contractions to be able to push mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of why i had to get out because I, I actually i pushed for a long time because i'm not i i bet i wasn't pushing as well as i could have been i think <laughs> Or just like it wasn't my forte, the pushing part. I was just like, where do I push? I couldn't really like localize where to push. Yeah. So, um, but Nubia was great with that because you know she would like put coconut oil like right where I needed to push and like show me what put her hands there where I needed to push, and that actually really helped. Once we figured out that like this was a problem, they'd be like, bear down like you're having a bowel movement, and I'm like, I don't really do that. Like I kind of. Like, I don't know if it's a vegan thing, but I just, I kind of just flow with it. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like, oh, this is what's happening. And so they, they actually helped me, you know, figure out where to like bear down and push and breathe nice. and breathe into. Nice. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. So Lex made his way into the world. <laughs> what's that been like or or even before we get to that what was postpartum like for you yeah I think physically it was it was a little surprising I did have a little little abrasion so just having to get stitched up with that was a, you know I mean I'm, I'm glad that I didn't have to go anywhere to do that Nubia just did it and um but yeah, I, I think physically I was like surprised at the recovery um, in that in that department because uh, that felt like it took a long time. But I guess it just I guess that's how it is. Mm -hmm. um, but emotionally, I was fine. I think there was maybe one week where I was like, I had I think I was having struggle struggling with um, breastfeeding. So that first mm -hmm. week. I had like mastitis. Is that what it's called? I can't. I don't, I'm not thinking of the word right now. But <laughs> I had a fever like one day, and I was like a little emotional. And so there was one day where I was just like, <laughs> you know. But for the most part, I just like I was okay. Like I made sure that I was not doing too much. We had family come and help. You know, my mom was there right away. Um, she she was allowed after <laughs> after the birth, so she like you know flew in that morning, and um, so it was great to just have someone there um, and not feel like I had to do jump right back into mm -hmm. or jump immediately into like being all you know up all the time with him. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, I think things were, were okay. After that little breastfeeding stuff, I think the breastfeeding was, was a little bit of ch a challenge at first. And I had some like hard things about like, you know, formula and, you know, supplementing with that for a while. Mm -hmm. And I ended up fine after like two weeks and, you know, I'm still breastfeeding today. And mm -hmm. so that all went fine, but, but that was also like kind of difficult just, mm -hmm. just to kind of like figure out what that is. And, um, but I didn't, I didn't really have any severe anxiety or depression. I was mostly like feeling very supported, asking for help. My friends never left. <laughs> they were there, <laughs> you know, they were still there, um, helping and, um, helping my mom, you know, she's not like a New Yorker. So helping in the way that she needed. And, yeah. um, so it was great to, to still feel supported. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that was key for me. And even now, um, that's the thing, like delegating and asking for help is the key mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to not feeling like you're losing it as a new mm -hmm. mom. And I think, um, every, anytime I'm feeling very overwhelmed, like when my husband went back to work, uh, it, it's really because I'm not, I'm not feeling supported or asking for support yeah. or arranging the support. So, yeah. um, and you know, also like sleep is a huge thing for me. And as you know, with newborns, <laughs> you really don't get much of it, but I feel like when I prioritize that, mm -hmm. which means for me, like I go to sleep still mm. shortly after he goes to, to bed. Yeah. Like I go to bed shortly after he goes to bed. I don't care if there's dishes in the sink. I don't <laughs> care if it's a mess. I go to bed because I know that I like, I'll have to wake up. And so if that's a 12 hour night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm at least getting some sleep somewhere in that 12 hour night. Yeah. I know it sounds like crazy, but that's what has worked for us as like, you know, that's how I stay sane is making mm -hmm. sure that I prioritize getting in the bed shortly after he does yeah Ew. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so having you share your birth story i'm remembering um something that i that i hold from my doula training like how will the birthing person remember their experience right how will this person remember it mm -hmm. and that bit is really important to me because a part of my work is the emotional healing right so i work with people who've either had some kind of trauma or some difficult emotional experience that mm -hmm. they're still unpacking or releasing and sometimes that experience comes after childbirth mm -hmm. right so their regrets that they have or there are ways that they were treated so that they feel um not prioritized right they feel overlooked and just thinking of your experience, it was so different. Like you were at the center and you were supported and you were held and it was such a loving space for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so true. I think mm -hmm. when I think back to it, I really do remember, I mean, there were lots of hard moments during pregnancy and I didn't really enjoy being pregnant that much, mm -hmm. but the birthing experience was like the most beautiful experience. Mm. I would, I don't know if it's of my life, but it's, it's up there. <laughs> so, um, I, but I'm, I am also glad that I had the initial experience of being in the hospital and knowing how women are treated who are low income and mm -hmm. who are of color and who, you know, just don't have as much of a voice and thinking about the people who I saw in those weight rooms that didn't get a chance to change their yeah. circumstance. Um, it makes me like want to do more to contribute to that. And I don't know what that looks like or if it's now or if it's later or mm -hmm. if it comes out in my writing or whatever, but I, it's on my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I'm glad that it, I'm glad that I got to see that in experience. And I feel like there's, there is a purpose for that because yeah. uh, that's, it's unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, so many, so many parts of it were unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we, and a lot of us just accept it because we don't know that we have other options. 
Yeah, so well said. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so I'm curious as to how your experience of giving birth in that supportive space or just being a mother in general, like how has that changed your work? Yeah, it's so funny. I was writing this musical um, <laughs> about friendship and it's like about being a mom now. It's like about being, um, it's it's a lot about motherhood now. Mm. It was always about women and friendships. And now I, I feel like it's kind of morphed into like <laughs> motherhood and what's, what that means and looks mm -hmm. like for people. And um so it's interesting. I and, and I was like kind of fighting it at first. I was like, am I gonna really write this song with this? And I'm like, yeah, that's what that's what we're doing. This is what we're doing. We're following what we're supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. if it's in you, that's in you now. So um yeah, it, it's really, really been it's really changed the way that I I guess tell stories. It's changed mm -hmm. what I want to focus on. Um the the new ideas that i have even beyond the piece that i'm working on mm -hmm. is um they all have to do with like being at this stage in my life um so it's 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 cool and then i'm getting to meet and understand better the other creative moms you know in my community and mm -hmm. this this past week you know has just been so great like i was really feeling last week that i was like man i'm missing something like i feel really like a little bit of lonely is this loneliness and i had two brunches with you know moms who are doing some kind of creative work and it just really mm -hmm. filled me up mm -hmm. it really inspired me to see what's possible as a mom and in this industry as a creative person, songwriter or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, so I'm feeling like a new drive and and like just like a pride to be able to, <laughs> to still create, you know, and there are people, you know, there are people who can't create and they they aren't in this position. And so it actually gives me a little bit of like extra like pride, like, yeah, like I have a new baby and I'm still like, I've made so much headway on my musical. And the yeah. other thing that we were working on is a children's musical. And I see, <laughs> I kind of like, you know, how you watch children's programming sometimes and you, you look at it and you're like, this is for the parents. There are parts of my yeah. musical that are like, this is for you moms, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't realize that I was doing that, but that's definitely <laughs> what that is. So um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So um, birthing in community is basically the theme of this conversation. Um, yeah. What's surprising to you about that or, or what what did you not expect about birthing in community, birthing with support around you? Yeah, I just I didn't expect to need it. Mm. <laughs> I always have been very independent um never really focusing on like i said asking for help um take i've always just like taken the initiative to do things my on my own and um like the superwoman thing you know just like i can do all the things i'm superwoman mm -hmm. i've got it all together and and that's amazing and that's true because like you know i was able to tap into the strength to bring him here yeah but also like that experience was 10 times better because of the people that supported me yeah and that's how that's what i that's what life is you know like that's what i'm learning is that yes i can write all the musicals on my own and perform on my own or whatever but how much better can it be if i just invite people in to collaborate mm. on this with me yeah. so that's like my that's my lesson from <laughs> from childbirth it's like let people help you because it will only make the experience better yeah mm, so yummy <laughs> so yummy well, i'm still working on it you know it's like every day i'm like oh yeah people helping and <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, is there any advice that you'd offer to expectant families? Anyone who's like not satisfied with their care, their care is kind of blasé. Any words that you'd offer? Um, I would say ask questions. 
ask for what you need and keep asking, Mm -hmm. keep asking and why and why and why. (laughs) And you might find that the answer is like totally arbitrary. And the answer is something that made sense like a hundred years ago that no Mm -hmm. longer makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that is going to guide you, (laughs) you know, like, um, and I get that from another artist, Michaela Cole, you might be familiar. She wrote, uh, and I may, I may destroy you and chewing gum. She, when she was in her contracts, she was like, so why can't I have 10% of my things? So explain why this is like this. Why is, oh, because nobody else has done it before. And nobody else has asked this question. Mm-hmm. That's not a good reason to not have care, the care that I need. Why yeah. can't I have a referral for physical therapy? Because you haven't seen me. I haven't seen the same person every time I've come into the office. So please explain to me why. And so that's, you know, I, I would say ask questions, get down to the bottom of it. If something doesn't feel right for you, mm-hmm. um, you don't have to do it most of the time. Yeah. Because yeah. I think in the hospital, a lot, of, one of the other things that bothered me was a lot of the testing that they want to do um, I just didn't, didn't feel comfortable with it. It was just like getting a little out of hand. Mm-hmm. And I just kept being like, why? Oh, it's not even a big deal. Well, why are we, do- you know, like, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that might be, that might be important to other people. But like, for me, I was like, nope, I'm done with that. Mm-hmm. I've made an informed decision to not do this anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you told me to, to use that, those words or where I got that from, but um, And yeah, so, you know, asking why and really connecting with your values and what your decision is. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I would love for us to send some love to Nubia. So I'm going to actually get her website and all of that information and share it um, at the end of this recording so that people know where they can find her. Yes. Yeah. And in the meantime, I would love for you to share your info so people know where they can find you. <laughs> yes, um, I am on Instagram at Tia DeShazor and my website is tiadeshazor.com and that's where you can find me. Awesome, awesome. And before we end Tia, what's the, cause you do one-to-one coaching with the creatives. So tell us more about that in case there's anyone interested who wants to hit you up for coaching. I do, yes. I, I coach artists on how to, you know, work with ease, to hack their creative flow, to figure out what their brand is and actually how to make more money from their art to not be a starving artist. Awesome. So that's what I do. I have a lot of um, uh, clients this year who have already leveled up this year and are making more money and having their full time artist month. And yeah, it's really exciting to see how that kind of happened as I'm, you know, postpartum still and, and mm-hmm. figuring out how to run my own business yeah. <laughs> in the midst of all of the other things we're doing, because I'm also auditioning with Lexington and we have we have Ooh. a we booked our first job together <laughs> we could shoot so that's also fun yeah congrats amazing and i'm doing an episode of law and order while i'm talking about myself there's an episode <laughs> of law and order coming out that i'm on as a as a uniformed cop next uh next month in march so catch okay. all over yeah. the place we'll we'll look out for that so <laughs> <laughs> what's lex like what what's his personality so far he is, he is a Taurus. He's the most Taurus Taurus that ever Taurus. <laughs> he is so thorough and persistent. Mm. Um, and he's also very funny and loving. He like, he Aww. loves to hug and kiss like everyone, <laughs> which is like, he's a pandemic baby, but he loves people. He has FOMO. If someone's there, he won't like go take a nap. If he knows that someone's there, he loves people. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just, he's kind of, he's a silly guy. He loves to laugh. If we're all laughing, he'll like do a fake laugh to laugh with us. And so he's, <laughs> he's just an all around fun guy. He's a delight. Like every, every week it's something new that he can do. He just learned to clap and say, yay. Aww. So, um 
Yeah, it's great. And it's great, like just watching him with others and the other people that love him. CK, it, it's just a delight. He's so amazing. Yeah. Well, I am sending love to you, to CK, <laughs> to him, and just blessings, blessings all around. We received that. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you for sitting with me, for sharing your birth story. And we'll, we'll make sure that we keep following you on Instagram to see what's the latest, to see what else you and Lex might book. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Tia. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been another episode of the Preparing for Pregnancy After Loss podcast. And you know where to find me on Instagram at The Birth Warriors, on my website at nataliefacey.com. All right, y'all, we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>